Welcome back to another pregame episode of Bandit Land Boulevard. Trevor Howard, Tony LaMonica, a.k.a. Boxhead 98 TL. Week 14, the Bandits are 5-5. Five and five, And i got to be real honest with you, Tony. Really friggin' nervous about this game. Mm. The Bandits need to take this opportunity, look at the team that they're facing against in the Vancouver Warriors, and right this sinking ship. They need to do it because if they go 5-6, and six, we're going to have some questions, not only on this show, but in the Buffalo Bandits community on what is the rest of the season going to look like and how could they possibly re- uh, recover from a 5-6 and six record. But we're bringing some good vibes here tonight. We should be able to win. So West Coast game, 10 o'clock Eastern time. How are you feeling going into this one? Well, a little nervous at first, you know, because, again, you know, with – Absolutely getting uh, talked down to Chippy and with the comments that have been said by Albany with just getting under our skin and not looking like ourselves again. I think going into this game tonight, you got to play, you got to play mad. You got to play aggressive and you can't give your opponents a breath of fresh air for any reason necessary. It may not be the team you should have done it against, but this is a wake up call game. I've said that last game, and obviously our offense didn't want to wake up in the second half, but you got to also look at the good things that happened last game to what we are expecting to happen this game. Shanahan's getting his second start. Yes. Rightfully so. He played well. I he think he it. did good. Um, defense, though, losing Spanger because of injury. Sucks. Uh, Zach Belcher is going to be definitely in the lineup and possibly – Frank Brown's going to be playing again. Sammy LaRue. Um, Sammy LaRue. And Sam LaRue got called up. So, again, that might be – might see some little twerks and t- uh, tweaks about our defense, but maybe McKay goes back and plays that and Sam goes to transition. I, I don't was just going to say that, too. Ian McKay, he plays transition. He's had experienced defense and offense. So, yep. uh, it, it, it'll be cool to see Quattro back there. But uh, yep. Sam LaRue finally getting his feet wet. For me, this whole week, it's been next man up mentality. With Matt Spanger, nothing nothing against him, but we've been winning with him and we've been losing with him. So I've been on this train with next man up. You know, yep. there, there are some prospects and players on the taxi squad that are chomping at the bit that want to make a statement on this team, and Zach Belter did that last week. So we'll see what Sam LaRue and uh, a healthy Frank Brown can do this week. Uh, sure. Hopefully we get Ian McKay, get some speed on that defensive side as well. I bet you he wants to play great. some D as well. Um we can talk about keys to the game, but I just want to get into some of the players to watch here for Vancouver. While they're not yep. a flashy team as far as the win and loss column, they do have some yeah. flashy players. I mean, I want to start things off with their number one D guy, Matt Beers. He's never going to Matt back Beers. down from any physical threat at all. Um, nope. I think he led the team in penalty minutes for them last week in their 9-5 to five loss to Toronto. Uh, he's not afraid to get down and fight in the mud with you. So I think Matt Beers, you need to find a way to, if he's going to be physical with you, you got to be physical back and be yep. strong on the four check. By that, exactly. I mean, dig for every loose ball. If he hits you, you hit him back if he's got the ball. Show that you're not mm-hmm. afraid of him. But Matt Beers is definitely one of the guys I'd circle on that roster. Yeah, especially with his veteran like skill and defense. Uh, Matt Beers is one of those go-to guys. You're going to either have to beat him with your speed or you're going to have to just out-tough the guy because he is really one of the guys that have been known in the league for his defensive skills. And the other thing is, is that he is going to prevent you from getting that last second shot. So he will make sure to force you out of the zone uh, as much as possible. And if you're going to have to win those battles, you better do it down and dirty because that's the only way you're going to have to probably beat Matt, uh, Matt beers for that reason. Exactly. And there's a reason why Toronto uh, only gave up or only. Yeah. There's a reason why they Vancouver only gave up nine goals to Toronto is because right. I think a big part of that was Matt beers creating a physical presence early in the game on defense. While sure. Nick Rose is a, is a good goalie and he only let in mm-hmm. five, uh, it was just one of those low scoring uh, back and forth old fashioned Canadian NLL games, which what I, sure. what I took away from that game last, uh, last week, Matt beers is definitely one of them. Oh, uh, we got to look at this one, a young guy, but he scored two goals last week. Kyle killing sure. number 67 on the Vancouver warriors. He scored two. Uh, if you look at how many they scored altogether, they scored five. He almost scored mm-hmm. half their goals by himself last week. So if there is a physical young threat out there uh, who's not afraid to shoot the ball from all around the rink, something the Bandits need to start doing doing more often as the season goes on, especially at a 5-5 five sure. five record, Kyle Killen is definitely one of those flashy players on the Vancouver Warriors as well. 
Yeah, I would have to say for the youngsters coming into this league and also for those that just experience playing with the veterans. He's one of those go-to guys that have been really picking up the pace and trying to like keep up with their game style. And Killen is going to probably surprise a lot of people today. Maybe not score a uh, sock trick, but he will get his points up there. If he's going to get a couple. Him to shoot the ball. Yep. I think he's, I think that, he's going to get a he's gonna do really well. Do we have to mention number 43? On uh, Vancouver, oh, Jesus. a little, uh, little, little revenge type of game. Friend of this show, Brad McCulley, because you know what? I will mention him because it's, it's always former bandits that do amazing against us. Ask Callum Crawford, okay. ask Sean Evans, ask Ryan Benesh, ask Corey yep. Small. It's always yep. former bandits against us. So you can't not include number 43, Brad McCulley, especially if he's in the yeah. lineup tonight too. They'd be stupid to sit him against his former team. I bet you he wants to. He wants to play against his former team, but yeah, it, only if he plays, only if he plays. If he does play, believe me, I got a feeling like they have record setting games when any former player wants to play against their former team and, and Brad McCauley, and we have no disrespect at all for him at all. Cause he's no, been he's, he's nothing great. but a gem on this show. And oh, he's yeah. just one of those down to earth guys that you're going to love. And it would be something to see him stand out like, a, you know, have a seven to eight point night. I got it. I got a feeling he might just do that against us tonight. Hey, we if saw he one really of those in the Colorado chances. game. We saw what we yeah. saw a seven point night out of him. I think in the Colorado game, two goals and yes, five assists or whatever it was. So it's possible. Sure. And for these, for both of these teams, I think there's blood in the water. Buffalo, especially, they were five and three, 15 minutes away from going six and three, and now they're treading backwards and going five and five. While Vancouver right. is at the bottom of the league, uh, both teams are bleeding out of their nose, bleeding out of, out of their mouth right now. It's Whoever's yeah. going to win this game is going to at least attempt to stop prevent the bleeding for, for a week. Yeah. yeah, prevent it from getting even further. Uh, sure. And you, one more Vancouver play I got to mention here. Well, I will mention too. Ryan Dilks is a turnover machine, another young guy on that team. And Keegan okay. Ball. Keegan Ball is the forward that shoots from all the way around the rank. I think he got 12 shots on goal last week against Toronto. Uh, expect more shots out of him, especially against a backup goalie. He's going to shoot the ball more. I guarantee you that. It's not Nick Rose you're facing against. It's freaking it's, – it's, and it's also not Matt Vince. It's Devlin no. Shanahan. So, and he knows yeah. that, and he's going to shoot the ball more. Yes, he will. And, uh, of course, he's going to test the new guy, especially with only having a second start this year and uh, really seeing more playing time he has this year than he has in his past. But I think this is good for Shanny for getting his chances because now he's starting to get – comfortable in his position he's starting to look like maybe i could be the starter for next year or so forth if god forbid vince says well i think the injuries have really took its toll and uh keegan ball is going to be one of those guys that are going to test shanahan's uh abilities in the net so we'll see what happens i mean i like that theory that you said he's going to have at least another dozen shots yeah i believe that to be so true Mm -hmm. I, I think going right into that, I think Devlin Shanahan is your number one player to player to watch for the Bandits. Obviously. If we're going to go yes. right over that, I mean, you, sure. you just explained really well that he's getting more, he's getting way more experience. Mm -hmm. Matt Vince is on the shelf for a couple weeks, and from what we got inside information, I don't remember who posted it on Bandits Mafia, but he posted a picture with right. him and Matt Vince. I'm sorry if I forget your name or if you're listening to this or watching this. Yep. Uh, but Matt Vince said he broke one of his fingers, so Oof. that's always a stinger. But uh, yeah, you got you got to focus on what you can focus or what you can control, and what you can control is the amount of playing time that Devlin Shanahan gets, and he looked great against one of the top teams uh, in Albany last week. So if he can yeah. carry that over, just if he can, just the attitude he brought, he was always at the mm -hmm. top of the crease trying to cut off angles. If he brings that same energy, I don't think Vancouver is going to score many goals. Yeah. But he is also inexperienced, so he is due for kind of a uh, a rough night. So I, I don't know. It could go either way, but Devlin Shanahan is definitely my number one bandit to watch tonight just because of how big of a role he's going to be tonight and how big mm -hmm. of a role that position is in general. Um, I need to look at someone who was not on the score sheet last week. He got mm -hmm. a handful of assists, but Albany's goalie had more goals than him. And what better team then the bottom of the barrel, Vancouver Warriors. Can this guy explode on 92? Find the back of the net. Come on. we It's been long overdue. Great Dane. We're going to be barking at the 290 bar where BK Ryan's used to be over there on Eggert mm -hmm. Road. Yep. So while, while you're three hours behind, 
seven playing yeah. at seven o'clock. We're going to be barking at ten o'clock p.m. rooting for you to score because we know you're the NLL Finals MVP for a reason. You just got to find the back of the net. You're an assist guy. Find the back of the net, ninety two. Yeah, and especially even before you even said it, I wrote his name down because I kind of knew exactly where you're going with there. I wrote it on I my computer you were screen. bring up Dane Smith to see, hey, it's time for him to get back in the goal scoring column. And you know what? You're absolutely right. Dane needs to find the net. He needs to not worry about hitting posts or trying to avoid the goalie. Go at the goalie. Just shoot at him. Good things come. You never know because it could be a bad bounce. Like uh, Shanny had a couple bad bounces yep. uh, against Albany. Maybe a hidden um, ball. Hidden ball trick moves could work because that's what worked on Shanny again. Um, but again, Dane needs to just keep on shooting and trusting himself. Just shoot, shoot, shoot. No matter what angle, just keep the goalie guessing. Because Eric, it's either Aaron do. Bold or Aiden Walsh. Let them guess. Exactly. Because the more they guess, the more they make mistakes, and goals come up, and goals happen to come true. And the worst thing you can do is think. When you're a lacrosse player, go out there, shoot the ball. Don't think. Just shoot. Don't it. think. Just shoot. Because when you get into that overthinking, you get into that bad habit of overthink. Oh, do I shoot here? Do I fake here? Blah, blah, blah. No, right. just shoot the damn rock. Good things are going to happen when you shoot the ball. And 92, also, he had a breakaway last week and hit the post. He's been getting mm -hmm. snake bit by that damn post all season long. Yeah. This team is bottom in the league. I know you guys are busted open. You're starting to bleed out of the nose a little bit from these last Just two games. Bit. But now is your chance to stop the bleeding. And Dane Smith getting back on the score sheet. Definitely uh, will prevent the bleeding from happening even more from that gush. You know who's going to be nose. a surprise player also besides Dane? Who? I got Kyle Buchanan. Oh, yeah. Kyle mm -hmm. Buchanan is one of the workhorses that gets all them loose balls. I got a feeling he's going to be all over the field today. He's going to create and create and create. But don't also forget he can score too as well. Yep. Going up against a Western team, he's pretty legit, and he averages about three, four goals per game against Western teams. That's a good chance for number 91 to bring his uh, A game to the table. Let it happen tonight. Let him get used to it. Because I think to take the weight off the shoulders of Dane and Josh and Chris, Kyle is one of those guys that you want to say, I can score too. I can get those necessary goals for you for the secondary scoring to happen. But we'll also mention a few other names. But I think Kyle is going to be one of those go-to guys for this game tonight. A guy that takes a beating. And he's played in San Diego for a couple of years. So he's played Vancouver a lot during his yes. tenure. More than any other tenured bandit on this roster. So he's played there before. He's no, He knows Vancouver's game style. Uh, they have a new coach this year in Kurt Malowski. And the Bandits, Bandit fans should remember Kurt Malowski a lot. Because he's the coach mm -hmm. who the Bandits beat in 2008 when he was coaching the Portland Lumberjacks. So we know how to beat his teams, which is a, a good yep. thing. And Kyle Buchanan mm -hmm. is that sneaky weapon that you can plug and play anywhere on the field and he'll score. Sure. I like that pick. Number one, Tehoka Nanakoke. We're mentioning these secondary scores outside of Dane Smith. Yep. When your secondary scores get going, it takes the pressure off your Dane Smiths, your Josh Burns, your Chase Frazers, your Chris Kluchas. It just happens. So yes, it does. when you get those guys' goals, the the uh, I'm going to say secondary, the first-hand guys – are more relaxed, they're more calm, they're, they're more in the zone, I think. So if you want to sure. win, you want to win this game by a lot, get your secondary guys open early to yep. take some of that pressure off of Dane, Josh, Chris, and uh, and Chase. Yes, I agree, because if you guys can get your secondary guys going and they can get half the goals for you and you can take care of the other half, it's a secured win in my book. Because yep. let's just say if it was – uh, let's just say 14 – the magic number is 14 tonight. If, if your be. secondary gets seven out of the, if gets 50% of it, seven goals, I'll be happy with that. Um, but again, like we mentioned, it'll take a lot of weight off the starters to say, well, we don't have to do all the work. They can do some of the work too. It's all as one. You do it as a team. You yep. don't do it as individuals. You play as one. You play as one team and you get back out of this awful streak of losses that you're in and just come out with a huge massacre win. I think it's, if you play tough and you play aggressive throughout from start to finish, I'm get I'm guessing maybe 20 Trev, yeah. 20 goals. No, I, I really do be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked. This offense is long overdue for one of those explosion type of games that we've seen I agree. from a couple years ago. Uh, and I think when you get your secondary guys going, it gets uh -huh. your first-hand guys and your secondary guys and your defense in a rhythm. Once you get them in yeah. a rhythm, game three of the finals proved last year you're not stopping them. You're also not coming back. When they get into a rhythm, two words for you, 
good luck. Good luck. Good luck. If we want to go <laughs> defensively, I want to look at number 12, Sammy LaRue, because mm-hmm. I think Sam LaRue, you looked at a guy like 77 last week and Zach Belter, he's making his debut of, on the season. He's played, he's laced up with the bands before, but he's making a season debut tonight. If he makes a physical presence or, you know, makes his name be known like Belter did last week, as far as his physical sure. presence, he might yep. do something different. I, he's definitely a player to watch. He might not score. He might not get you the sports center top 10 highlight, but Sam LaRue is definitely a player to watch. And I was going to say 77 as well. Very physical yep. first game. Mm-hmm. And he's going to be going into this one. Very, very pissed off after yep. last week. So you might, you're going to get a pissed off Zach Belter against a team that's really been struggling at the bottom of the barrel this year. I, I don't think those things match very, very well for the Vancouver Warriors. I think when you get an angry bandits team, Going in mm-hmm. against a very vulnerable Western team, yeah, and it starts with defense and physicality. Sure, God, I don't really know if they match tonight. I really well, don't. It could be either way if you think about it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, Toronto does have a lot of firepower too, and and Vancouver only allowed nine. Yeah, but, but the Toronto point, only allowed five. They only allowed five. You they, never know. Their, their offense only scored five. That's right. So it's it's but- going to be one of those games where it's going to be tough at the end of this show to predict the score. But I can mm-hmm. tell you one thing, it's God, I think Bandit fans are like, this is the time to buckle down. Right? This sinking yeah. ship. Because if sure. you don't, you don't screw it on straight. You're looking at five and six going back home out of the playoffs, most likely. Because Calgary, much. Calgary still gotta play this week. I yeah. think they play tomorrow and they're tied with you for for seventh, seventh and eighth. And then I think Rochester's right behind you after that. So Yeah. At least you got the head to head there, but we don't even want to talk about going five and six. That's you'll you'll hear it from us if that happens. But if it Oh yeah. We just we we need to go game by game, play yep. your style. And I think that starts with something we kept harping on last week in the pregame, which they yeah. didn't listen to us. Nope. It was staying out of the freaking penalty box. What yes. in the hell? Yes. That that second half, first Ugly. we'll get into the offense after, but yeah. The second Ugly. half, we're in the box. We're taking late uh, technical penalties after the play is over and stuff like that. Yep. Like so, we, 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 we can't have that. We cannot have that. On the road, three-hour time difference, stay out of the penalty box. Yeah, guys, you got to keep your composure too, especially with a young team that like Albany was chirping before, and now it, they got again. They did it under your – you know, got under your skin – they won the battle of wits, and that's why they swept you. But this is a game. Let's just take a step back. Let's get back to basics. Let's take a deep breath and go in with a full knowledge of what we're going to do tonight. We're going to play against Vancouver. Yes, they're two and eight. They're not. The record-wise stands is they're not better than you. But again, you have to realize any team, regardless of record, can still beat you. Yep. So play mad. Play aggressive, don't quit after one half of playing, and play your game. I want to see a full 60 of nonstop bandits lacrosse. Full 60. That means offense can can go AWOL for 25 minutes, like last week. We didn't score a goal in 25 minutes at one point last week. Horrible. Like like you said, that's not just bad. That's horrible. And if you want to play a full 60, I don't even think last week the bandits played a full 30. They, they played a Ooh. full 10 minutes in the first quarter. That's about yeah. it, I want to say. Mm-hmm. I don't care who you're facing. You could be facing against a defunct team that doesn't even exist anymore, and you'd probably still lose if you only played 10 minutes. You played the Ooh. Albany – or if you, you, if you played the Montreal Express right now, who aren't even a team well, – We're going played, that far back. Damn. And only played 10 minutes. Or the Pittsburgh Crossfire, whoever you want to mention. Uh, <laughs> you would, you, they'd probably still give you a run for your money if you only played 10 minutes. So it's going to be I'm tough. To think, oh, wait, I got one. Chicago Shamrocks. <laughs> them. Yeah, let's try the Ottawa Rebel. The Ottawa Boston Rebel. Blazers. I don't care. Whatever yeah. you want to say. <laughs> Boston Blazers. We can go Portland Lumberjacks. No. Yeah. If, if you played 10 minutes against the Charlotte Cobras, who were oh, didn't, win a, didn't win a single I game forgot about that team. in 1996 that went Jeez. winless in their franchise history, I don't even they, – they, they might give you a run for their money. So Sure. You can't take any team lightly. Seriously, That's you really right. cannot. You can't, guys. And um, this is it. We we can we can mention faceoffs, but is there really any point? 
No, we, we no, might we can't. Win, we we might win three, four. Oh, that I think, just even saying oh, that. With that, we said this last week, but they really didn't do it much of it last week. If you're not going to win a faceoff, which is extremely possible, jump mm-hmm. on the loose ball. Yeah, These guys got in to. Vancouver are not as fast on their feet as Albany. And it's you can just watch five minutes of film and you'd figure that out on your own. Yeah. So they're not as quick. You're faster than them. Obviously, yep. you're faster than them. If you're not going to win it. a damn face-off and our GM's not going to go out and find a friggin' face-off guy, go out yep. there and jump on every loose ball. You have to. That's the only way you're going to win these battles. possessions equals more goals. Yep. That's what it is. It. Face-offs are possessions right there. When yep. they scoop it up like Joe Nardella did last week and – Jake Withers did the week before and made it mm-hmm. look so friggin' easy, like a like a varsity kid going up against a U nine kid, like yep, that. That easy. Much. guys, those are free possessions essentially. And I don't understand yep. the people on Facebook and on Twitter that say faceoffs aren't really that important. Faceoffs mm-hmm. are possessions. The more possessions yes. you get, the more shot opportunities you get, the more goals you get. I don't understand why people don't don't understand that. That could just be me. Could just be the people out there using like different logistics or whatever. I I don't understand that at all. I think if you yeah. get a face off guy, the championship window is back on. And if we it had is, a face off guy going into tonight, I'd say we win this game by ten. Yeah, because you, you get f- like you said, you stated that we would get more possessions and we have more opportunities. That's exactly correct. More you got to have off a face off guy too. back. You, so you I don't a, know what's going on, yeah. but they got to get a guy back. They have to get a face off guy back. There are, there are a couple it's, free agents. I don't agents. care if it's Adler or somebody retired. Somebody's got to get in there knowing what they're doing. Seriously. Yeah. Seriously. We can, have can, to. Guys, can, I, you can agree to disagree. That's fine. But to us, face-offs are key. That's priority number one. To 95% if of the don't fan take base. Tone, 95% then what? of the fan base says that, Tony. Yeah. So hopefully that'll change tonight. I mean, I mean, I don't know who their center guy is. And really, I don't know how well their uh statistics are for face-off wins, but Maybe this might be an the opportunity to take just be like, hey, let's just go for it. Let's give it a shot. Let's see what we can do against this team and and hope for the best. But I'll you got to play with heart. They're not as good as Nardella. They're not as good as Withers, but they are top eight. Mm, that's I, don't even, great to I, don't, know. I don't even think we're – I think we are pro- we have to be dead last in the league with the last two games. We we have well, to be. There's, there's Last no- two? How about last three? <sighs> last three games. Yeah, my God. I can't forget about the Rochester game in the second half. Yeah. Uh. And not only that, faceoffs. When you have a sizable lead, it gives you the gives mm. your offense the time to bleed the clock. Yes, but we didn't. We can't do that now. But I don't know. Some people just don't understand. Like Brandon Francis, Clay Hill. If you're out there listening and you want to, you want to do something over the weekends. I mean, the Bandits are sure. probably looking for some guy right now. Somebody. You, know, you you guys know Steve Dietrich very very well. You guys were teammates with him for a while. So Brandon Francis, oh, Clay Hill. Uh, who else used to take faceoffs? Did Pat McCready used to take faceoffs? Yeah. I think once in a blue moon, but yeah. He could he could probably give some of their current guys a run for their money, if I'm being <laughs> real. I can tell you one thing. Pat McCready wouldn't be slow in the face-off circle. You know what his nickname was. Yeah, Pat Speedy McCready. Speedy. Yeah, he wouldn't be the slow guy there. So. Nope. Mm. And if, if I had to say one more thing before we get into our score predictions, sure. remember what your roster was like last year when you had essentially your entire offense outside of Dane Smith her, and Ian McKay injured? Yeah. You're dealing with the same thing, except it's defense. Mm-hmm. We can't use that as an excuse. We can't use nope. that as a cop out, as a deterrent. Nope. We cannot. You mm-hmm. won all those games last year. And I know a lot of them were in overtime and they were like mm-hmm. nail biting, bite your fingernails type of games, but those were entertaining games. And you came out on the winning side of those multiple times. Yep. You could do the same thing. That is what got yes, you to the can. championship. You guys hit a bit of a road bump offensively in the month of March last year. You know, I remember the San Diego game and the the St. Patrick's Day game. They didn't score over 10 goals or wherever it was. Um, I believe so. But you found your way back on the tracks, and that's what the Bandits have proven over the years that they're able to do. Don't yep. give me this, oh, faceoffs aren't important, but we're just so banged up on defense. No. Last year we were so banged up on offense, we consistently won games. Just remember yep. how you got there last year, and I promise you'll get out of the storm. Yep, just got to play with – you got to play with heart, guys. You got to play confident. You can't be scared because, oh, my God, one guy's going down. Then the next guy's going an injury. This guy's going an injury. We lost our starting goalie. doesn't matter. 
like you said, it's the next person up. Yep. That's what why, why we have the best depth in the league, because we got guys that can fill the void. You just have to play with confidence. You can't play scared. You know, go out there and prove yourselves to not only yourself, but prove it to the, uh, you know, your teammates, prove it to the organization, prove it to the fans that keep going there, buying the tickets to go watch you guys, buying your jerseys and all that. Come on. That's the reason why you're out there doing what you're doing. So go out there and play with pride and heart. That's all you can do. And remember that you faced adversity last year, and what did that get you? Yeah. You got you, you got one a of those. You got you one of those banners up there. That's so, it. Just remember how you got there last year. That's the good thing about winning a championship is that you can easily repeat it again if you do the same thing. That's right. Even though other teams will adjust. But I think it's time to get into our score prediction right now, Tony. Sure. I think Devlin Shanahan plays plays great tonight, and I think okay. the offense – doesn't really come back to 100%, but I'll say they'll, they'll come back to 85%. Lord knows faceoffs are going to be under 10. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to say the Bandits win this one 12 to 9 over the Vancouver okay. Warriors. 12 9? Oof. Well, defensively, it's going to be a battle of beat up defense against a defense that's ready. So, and honestly, like I said before, it's a game to play mad. It's a game to play aggressive, yes. and it's a game to play. Yep. We need to kick your ass. Yep. So basically, I'm going to say Bandits win 18 to s- 18 to 11. I'll say that. 18, 18 to 11. 11. Good. All right. I yeah. like that. Bandits by seven? Yeah. I like that. I, I, I'm thinking to 11. of it like a more low scoring type of game. Um, mm-hmm. I was thinking t- that at first, but then I'm like, mm, maybe not. I was gonna think. I was only saying that because I don't think we're gonna get as many possessions as we should. Um, and the offense, I don't know if it's gonna be a wall one week to one hundred and ten percent the next week. I think you gotta get to that step gradually. I think the band will sure. score over ten. I just think. Sure. Yeah, I just think they'll win by three. But uh, big game tonight. I can't yep. say if I was if I told you I wasn't nervous about this game going up against the Vancouver oh, Warriors. I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't. So. I, th- right. I know I'm not, I'm not the only Bandit fan out there that's that's thinking the same way, but the Bandit sure. tonight, it, you you write the ship, you're steering in the right direction. You got Saskatchewan and Toronto, your next two games, two winnable right. games after that. So just take it one game at a time. If you win this game, it changes the season. Exactly. And I don't see why they shouldn't. This is, this is right now we're already past halfway. Yep. So you have eight games left. Right, so game you 11. make the best of it. Yep. Really, you got to make the best of it now. So you can't really lose more than three. Right. You just have to go out there and play for the last eight games. You got to win, I'd say, five or six to even have hope. Get it. Get a spot. Get a spot, and you have a legitimate shot at winning it all. Just get a spot. Just punch your ticket to the playoffs. That's it. That's what you got to do. But, Tony, hit us with a sponsor. You got it. Well, we like to thank our main sponsor, which is Mitchell's Tavern, located at 734 uh, Sheridan Drive up in Tonawana, New York. Guys, if you have not tried this place yet, believe me when I say this, the service is amazing. The food is spectacular. And also mention the boys of Bandaland Boulevard, Tony LaMonica, a.k.a. Boxhead 98 TL, alongside with Trevor of the Power Hour. Um, guys, I be- I'm not going to stop you from you know choosing or wherever you want to go, but Mitchell's Tavern, again, is Probably one of the best bars I've ever had with restaurant and service experience. They are amazing at what they do. So go and check that out. And believe me, you're not going to be disappointed. Great beer also, selection, like too. To, wait, what's that? I said great beer selection, too. Uh, yeah, they have a lot of choices, believe me. Yep. And we'd also like to thank um, those who are watching us right now uh, live on YouTube. Uh, we like to have that like and subscribe. Uh, also hit that notification bell to keep on listening in on Vandaland Boulevard of all your Buffalo Bandits lacrosse needs. And we'd also like to thank those who listen on an every known device, known demand on Spotify.fm and Anchor uh, to give us that five-star rating. And to also keep on met- mentioning, we want fans to join the yes. crew here. We want you guys to say your piece. We want you guys to say what you feel. Come on to the show. We are, like I said, message me or message Trevor over there. We would love to have you on this show. Just mention us and say, guys, I want to join in and say my input about the necessary game that's been played or about bandits across history. We'll Anything. talk about it. Anything. I don't care. Yep. It don't matter. And also tonight, 
10 o'clock, uh, we, we got to give thanks to our, our buddy, Tony Fela from Bandit Land, or from uh, Bandit's Mafia. Yes. If you don't have ESPN Plus, because the game, yep. I guess tonight's game isn't on CW23. It for is the not on networks. CW23. Uh, if you're not in your pajamas or anything, it's a late game. We know that. So maybe maybe pound down a black – Maybe pound down a, uh, you know, a black coffee or something before you go out. But 290 Slide Sports Bar and Grill, right where BK Ryan's used to be, uh, mm-hmm. right there on Eggert, or Eggert Road, right next to um, Fit Fuel, the restaurant yep. there, right across from Just Pizza. They're having sure. a watch party there tonight at 10 o'clock. So get your spot yep. there. If you can't watch the game when you really want to, go there. If you want to just listen to the game, yeah. turn on 15, 20, the bets, listen to Gertler and the guys over there that do a very, very good job covering Absolutely. the Bears tonight. So, uh, Tony, I think with that said, five and five, biggest game of the year. I, If you told me that in November before the season started that the Vancouver Warriors versus Buffalo Bandits would be the biggest game of the year so far, mm. I would tell you that you're out of your damn mind. But Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> whether we're five and five, whether we're undefeated, whether we're remaining at 500 for the rest of the year, we still have three words to tell you. Before we sign off, what are those three words? Here we go, guys. Ready? Yep. Let's, Let's go, go bandits. bandits. Let's go. Let's go. Get that dub. Don't settle. Don't settle. Never settle. Win nope. tonight. Let's go. Get it up.